Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video here this week. In this video, if you remember a previous video that we did, we're gonna be talking about a rotor and how to actually get a new one of these, which I have right here. Luckily, the manufacturer ended up sending this through to me and I am going to replace this on the motor that had that failure. That plane was flying around and all of a sudden the motor completely seized up rendering it useless and the plane had to come in for an emergency landing. Upon investigation, we ended up finding that the Kevlar wrap that secures that the magnets onto the rotor, which you can see right here, all the wrapping, there's four magnets. You can see the actual position and location of these magnets and then you have the wrapping that goes around them. That keeps everything intact. When that lets go, the magnets are then able to escape the rotor and they end up contacting inside in the stator. And once that happens, in this case, for this specific setup, it also took the speed control out. Let's figure out how we get the new rotor for this motor inside the case here and close it all up. And lastly, we'll finish off by actually testing to make sure we get the KV value that this motor says it operates at, which is 1200 KV. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our rotor and we're going to get the appropriate washers that are included with this brand new rotor set on the rotor so that we can go and insert it into our motor case. So I got the washers all set up. I could just drop them onto the motor. We got this going on here. We got a washer here on the back end. And from here, I'm going to insert the brand new rotor into the motor. Now you have to be careful that this doesn't end up shooting forward in such a way. It's gonna to wanna to rip itself out of your hand. So be careful as you insert it into the motor, hold it with a lot of force. So right now it's pulling at a great amount of pressure and I'm slowly gonna let that rotor just slide between my, my thumb and my fingers. And in some cases it feels a little bit stuck so you wiggle it around and there it goes. It's pulling itself right in there deep. So that's what we want and we push it right into the end and now it's out the other side and we can see that it has uh, pretty much bottomed out on this back surface. So we're looking pretty good so far. Uh, now the next thing we can do is dry fit the case on the back. I'm gonna straighten out these wires a little bit. We're gonna dry fit that case. So if you had to go and make a bearing replacement, the same idea would apply. If you wanted to go and change bearings at the same time, here you can see the bearing. All you need to do is place a screw right on this side so that the head of the screw is sticking out and then you give it a tap and these bearings are going to come right out. You do the exact same, obviously before we place the rotor in, you'd have your screw so the head is on the side that we see and you just give it a tap and that would come out as well. So that's the idea on how this would work. So now that we have our rotor seated in there, I want to go and dry fit this, making sure that we are going to be okay and there's nothing here that's going to stop us from what we're doing. So the dry fit should work out in such a way where we're going to get our motor uh, situated. There it is. It's a little bit difficult to go and place it on. And you're centering up that shaft as you do that. So it might take a little bit to get that all centered up. This is the dry fit round. What we're going to do is just make sure everything's okay. We want to rotate the shaft and make sure everything's operating nice and smooth and free. If you do have some binding, it might be because the washers that you placed in there is keeping things a bit tight. In that case, you want to go and reshim your motor shaft. Now in this particular motor, it's important to know that it is not pinned in the rear and that's why we do have to use some sort of glue. In this case, we're gonna be using uh, this CA glue here. And because it's not pinned, that means the load that is actually placed on the motor cannot be in this direction, pushing the cap so it pops out. That's very important. So a use that you do not want to use this motor in is a radio controlled boat application where the propeller is going to force the shaft back in. Another good example of where you do not want to use this motor is in the case of a pusher style propeller. That would also push the shaft of this motor in. On an EDF, we're pulling, so the force is in the opposite direction. On a typical propeller plane, same idea. So those are the applications that suit this motor as well and any geared application where you have a pinion gear right mounted to this shaft is gonna be okay because you're only gonna experience some side load and there's gonna be no load in this direction. So that's why we can get away with using CA glue here on our motor. There's gonna be no forces. 
So there's a lot of different options you can use. If you don't have CA glue, a good epoxy would be good as well. I'm gonna pop this off and we'll do this one last time. This time we're gonna have glue on there and then we'll test the motor, make sure that we have a good working motor. We have our cap off now again. So I'm gonna go and apply the CA glue to our shaft. So here's the cap. We're gonna apply glue just to the very top surface here. Uh, we don't need too much. It looks like I'm overdoing it right now. So I'm going to lighten up a little bit here as we go around the edges. There we go. So now what we can do is repeat the step where we go through and place this motor on. So I'm going to work, make sure I don't obviously get my hands on any of that glue. So we'll place it in there. And then the last step that we have here is to just seat it in position. So there we go and a nice squeeze. So we do have the clamp available if we need that as well. So after this is seated, it looks like it's all the way bottomed out. I gave it a good squeeze, it looks good. Last time, we're gonna give this another check and our motor is spinning freely. So pretty good, we got that all seated and that should be it for the rotor installation. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and make sure that we're actually achieving the right KV. Now the reason why we're doing this is obviously one, to make sure that everything's working fine. And the other reason is, is to make sure that we didn't have any failure with the windings of the motor. We know that it shorted out because the speed control was damaged, which meant a lot of power went through the windings within the motor in order to short that speed control out. So we just wanna make sure that everything is okay and we're measuring the same voltage on all three phases. So let's go ahead and run that. Make sure we're seeing the same voltage all the way around. All right, so now what we're gonna do, since we have our motor, it's dried for about five to 10 minutes. We don't need it to be perfectly dry. We're not gonna be placing any significant load. We're just gonna rotate the shaft so that we can hit a certain RPM and we're gonna measure the voltage for each one of the phases. So let's first set this all up. I have this on the table right now and what I've done is connected from our red wire we got the red lead from our multimeter. I don't know if you can see that clearly. And then from the yellow lead of our motor, we have our black multimeter wire there. So I'm gonna rotate this at maximum speed of the drill on high. And we're seeing about 542, so that's pretty good. About half a volt or so. I changed one of the wires. Now we got the red wire on the white lead of the motor. We're just now moving to the second phase. So let's go and spin that phase up. So about 544 is what we saw. It did jump up to 545 and then return back to 544. Now we have the black lead switched over from the yellow to the red wire. We're measuring the third phase and we're gonna see what kind of voltage we get out of that. So we're right there around 545, 546. So overall, we're only seeing a few millivolt difference between each of the phases. I'll throw the percentage difference up on the board. So now what I wanna do is go and switch our setting from our AC voltage over to our frequency setting here on, a, on the multimeter. This way I can actually measure the RPM that this drill is spinning our motor up to. Then we take the voltage of those three phases plus the RPM that we spin up our motor and we go compute the KV of the motor and just make sure that we're there about where we should be for this specific motor. So let's go do that, switch over to frequency and run up our motor. Okay, so that should be good showing us the frequency of this motor. We'll take approximate average of what we saw and we'll use that in order to make the calculation for KV. It was at this point where I realized something is not quite adding up. Voltages of 542, 544, and 546, they don't vary from one another all that significantly. However, if we look at the drill RPM of 1394 and the KV value of our motor is 1200, at 1200 kV, we should be seeing something closer to one volt. So if we go and submit this and calculate that kV value for us, 
Our calculation is coming out to be about 1900 kV. With our rotor installed, this is still telling us there is a problem. For a 1200 kV motor, we should not be measuring 1900. Something has gone wrong, so the investigation continues. I'll be looking further into it. I'm going to grab another motor and see how close the motor spec is to the actual value that I should expect. I'm going to take a look on the site to see if they actually make a 1900 kV motor. If they don't make a 1900 kV motor, which I don't think they do, this is something that may suggest there's internal damage to the windings where they shorted out and now don't have the same resistance that we expect because they are shorted and thus pushing the KV value up higher. So look forward to seeing that in a future update video. As for now, 1900 KV is telling us there is a problem. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.